Hang on. <laughs> Amen. Hang on. Don't give up. Don't give up. Our youth are growing up. Growing up fast. Praise God. Awesome. They did an awesome, awesome job to the glory and honor of God today. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We exalt you. We glorify you, Father. You are worthy. You are worthy, Father. You are worthy. We give you all the praise. We thank you for this day, O oh God. We thank you for who you are, all that you are to us. We give you praise. And as I stand before you, as we all stand before you this day, O oh God, we ask that your will be done. Use us for your glory, O oh Lord. Let our light shine in this dark world so that men and women, children everywhere will see the good works that you're performing in us and desire to glorify you in heaven. Now, Lord, as I stand, I ask that you use me as your vessel of honor. That that you have for us today, oh God, we receive it with a heart, a receptive heart, and we walk in obedience to your word. And we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. We give all glory and honor unto our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us each and every day of our lives. To our Bishop Simmons, Elder Fred, Pastor Toby, to his beautiful family, to our mothers, praise God, our beautiful mothers, to each and every one here in the building. Saints, we are blessed today. We are a blessed people. We're here. We're, we're, we're alive we're, we've made up our minds to come out to church service and to magnify God, to be in fellowship. We are blessed. May not have everything we think we should have or want to have or things aren't going the way we would like them to go, but we're blessed. We are still blessed, and we give God all the praise. Our word for you today is a word that we know very well, new life. And it's our scripture that I, I believe that the Lord gave to our bishop and first lady. They weren't bishop and, and first lady at that time. They were pastor and first lady when we were at 7th and Dunbar. <laughs> my cousin just walked in. And um, I love all my cousins, but I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in a while. But um, see, you didn't tell me they were coming this morning. <laughs> um, the Lord gave them the scripture when they gave them the new name for Glassboro Glorious United Pentecostal Church. That's what we were known as. And when they came in and the Lord put them in place, they changed the name to New Life in Christ Ministries. That was the name that the Lord had given them, had placed on their heart. And the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.17. New life, do y'all know new, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17? We got to get our get together before we start doing. <laughs> okay. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Let's hear it. Amen. Amen. That says a lot. We quote that a lot. We see it a lot. We read it a lot. But we don't realize how big of an impact that has on us as individuals, as born-again believers. And the Lord gave me this. I was sitting at the computer, and Bishop had said, okay, you're going to be ministering on the 23rd. And I was in Bridgeton, yes, or Vineland yesterday and ministered. I said, Lord, I've, I don't remember ever doing a back-to-back -back like this, but you got it. You got this because this is not about me. This is about what you have for your people. So the Lord wanted me to share this with, uh, the Lord wants to share this with us today. The new creation in, that is described 
in 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, some version says you are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. The word therefore refers us back to verses 14 through 16. So the verses 14 and 16 is telling us, Paul is telling us that all believers have died with Christ and no longer live for themselves. Our lives are no, are no longer worldly. But we seem to forget that. We forget that when we stand or whether we were kneeling or whether we were lying in bed or wherever we were, when we quoted those words, when we spoke out of our mouths and claimed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that he died for my sins, we repented of our sins, and we accepted what he did for us. The moment we did that, we became a whole new creation. Now, I want y'all to think about this as, as I'm sharing, as the Lord has given it to me, because it, it, like Pastor said, it blew my mind, but it gave me the mind of Christ even more so. Because the word of God tells us, grow in grace and then the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's my goal. We have all died to, our, we've died to the flesh. Galatians 1 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Think on the crucifixion. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives on the inside of me. And the life which I now live in the faith, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I was crucified with Christ. The moment I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, the old me, March 23rd, 1956, when I was born, that old me died, was crucified. And the moment that I spoke those words, and it was in April, and to give you the date and the day, I can't. And it hurts me because I asked Coleman, I said, do you remember the date and the day that you were born again? He says, no, but I know it was on an Easter Sunday. I said, yeah, it was. <laughs> Perfect day to receive Christ. And it, it bothered me that I didn't. I know it, it doesn't, you know, the Lord is looking at me like, Tim, I just get over it. But it bothers me because I said, Lord, I remember my birthday. But my birth, my new birthday, I don't remember. I know it was in April. But the Lord began to speak to me, to me, and he shared with me, or this it could have been me just beating myself up. I said, Lord, we celebrate our birthdays, that day that we were born on this earth, and we get excited about it, and we have big parties. And we, I mean, some of us really go wild with it. I have a sister-in-law, when she worked, she took a whole month. She would save up and take a month off. Some take weeks off for their birthdays to celebrate that time. And it's a good thing. Am I putting it down? No. But we as born-again believers, when we do celebrate those, that day, we got to be careful of some of the things we do. Because as born-again believers, we got to be born-again believers in all that we do. we got to give God the glory. And it's okay. But knowing that we were crucified with him, our death is that the old sin nature, which was nailed to the cross with Christ, it was buried with him, and just as he was raised up from, by the Father, so are we raised up to walk in the newness of life. So the things that we do, we, we get caught up in when we look in the mirror and we see ourselves as we are as we grow from the time that we can understand and comprehend of looking at ourselves and knowing who we are, and we see we're growing older. We look at our children, they're growing older. Our grandchildren, they're growing. Things change. But the real part that God looks at, that newness, that who we are, who we really are, it's not about this flesh that we see every day or that we look upon on each other every day. That's not about who we are, what God has done in us, that new creation that he has created in us. And in order to understand that, you got to understand what creation really is, the full understanding of new creation. First, we must grasp that it is, in fact, a creation. It's something from nothing, something that God has created. 
And John 1 and 13 tells us this. And I'm going to start with the 12th verse. John 1, 12 and 13. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. See, my mom and dad came together for me to be born, for me to be here. But it was God's will for me to be born again. He chose each and every one of us that are sitting in this building that are born again, that is claiming Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He allowed you to be born of him into his family. So that makes us a whole new individual. We may not look it on the outside, but on the inside, which he looks at, which he recognizes, that's who we are. We did not inherit the new creation, nor did we decide to recreate ourselves anew, nor did God simply clean up our old nature. He created something entirely fresh and unique. See, see yourself. This is how we need to begin to see ourselves. The new creation is completely new, brought about from nothing. Just as the whole universe was created by God, ex nihilio, from nothing. Ex nihilio, something from nothing. Only God, only the creator could accomplish such a feat. Only God. Old things have passed away. The old refers to everything that is part of our old nature. So if, if, we're, if we find ourselves doing the same thing that we used to do, you're, you're dragging around something dead on you, and you got to get rid of it. The old things are, are dead. They're, do, they're done away with. That natural pride, love of sin, reliance on works, relying on what I can do in order to get in good with God. Lord, I come to church on Sundays. I'm here on Wednesdays. I'm at prayer at noontime. I'm giving my tithe. I'm it's not about your works. He didn't do that because of works. He did it because of love. He loved us. While we were yet sinners, he loved us. And he allowed his son, his only begotten son, to come down to give his life so that we may have life everlasting, abundant life. Not only when he calls us home, but while we're here right now, abundant life. Habits and passions, our former opinions. It's not about how I think or how I feel. It's about what thus saith the Lord. Most significantly, what we loved has passed away, especially the supreme love of self. And the world tells us, love yourself, and, it's, and you sh we have to love ourselves but not to the extreme where the world is telling us to. And we shared yesterday about God's peace, and he said, I give you peace, but not the peace that the world gives. See, the world mimics what God does, he tries to imitate. That's what the devil does. He tries to take what God has that is pure, and he, there's no pureness in him, and he tries to imitate to draw away, to take our focus away from what God has blessed us with and who we really are. Self-promotion. Did you hear me? Did you see how, did you hear how I was singing? Girl, I hit that No, Didn't I hit that though? So who were you doing it for? Did, if you gotta pump yourself up to get somebody to acknowledge or recognize, if anybody recognizes us, they better be seeing the Christ in us and not us but the Christ in us. I get a lot of compliments from people. And saints, I want y'all to know, I do not go around looking for compliments. Mother, I love you. You know who I'm talking to. I love you. But I don't go around looking for compliments because it's not about me. I don't want people to see me. I want people to see the Christ in me. I love the Lord with all my being. And that's who I live for. Self-justification. Well, they shouldn't have did it to me. If they didn't do, if they hadn't said what they said, I wouldn't, you know. 
There is no justification in doing wrong. It doesn't matter what they did. In my case, it doesn't matter what they did. Because the Lord is going to judge me for my actions and my reactions. First lady, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. We had a Bible study, and it was dealing with actions and reactions. People can say things about me, about you, do things to you. But God is going to judge. He'll take care of them, but he's going to judge you for your actions and your reactions. Individually, we've got to look out. Take care. Make sure you're doing what's right in the eyes of God. The new creature, the new creation looks outwardly towards, toward Christ instead of inwardly towards self. The old things died, nailed to the cross with our sin nature. So saints like Paul said, examine yourself daily. Examine yourself. Lord, am I still doing things? Do I still have habits in my life that are from the old nature? Because they should be dead. Die to flesh daily. Don't allow that old nature to take hold that you begin to become comfortable in it. Galatians 1 and 5 tells us that we shouldn't, let me get, I'm going to read it, get it and read it right. 1 and 5, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't allow habits, old habits, to hang on for so long that it begins to take control and, and it becomes comfortable to you. And then you don't even recognize it as being sin anymore. And that's the trick of the enemy. That's where he wants you to be. You may ask, what about a Christian who, co who continues to sin? Okay, and we hear that. We've heard that. You know, they say they're born again, but they're still doing the same old thing. They're, they're, they're still sinning. There's a difference between continuing to sin and living in sin. As long as we're in this flesh, and Paul tells us in the seventh chapter of Romans, if you read the seventh chapter of Romans, Paul tells us about the sin nature that he's, that the flesh, and the things that he would love to do, he don't do. The things he finds himself that he doesn't want to do, that's what he finds himself doing. And why does he say this? He, uh, oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me out of this? Who can save me out of this? And at the end of that, that, that chapter, he says, but thanks be to God who causes me to triumph. He has created in me a newness that tells me that I, God's not judging me, you know, every time I make a mistake because he's looking at that new nature. So me, I have to get into the word of God that tells me to, to start reading the soulless realm. It's got to be renewed. It's got to be transformed according to the word of God. So as I stay in his word, as I stay before him, we feed our bodies. Some of us don't feed our bodies the way we should. Some of us feed, feed it a little more than we should. But, and some of us don't feed, don't eat properly. We'll eat, but we're not eating properly. The word of God, saints, um, you know, and, and y'all hear this. I know you hear it, you hear it, you hear it. When the Lord keeps saying things to you, it means you're not catching it. Some of us are, not all of us, but we got to catch hold to this. You have got to get the word of God in you. You've got to get it in you. The Lord said it's not what comes out or, you know, uh, that defiles. When we don't have the word of God in us and situations come about, see, that spirit man is new. And you fought, find yourself in a situation where you either got to choose right or wrong. And if right is not in there, wrong is going to come out. And we've got to represent who we are in the right fashion. And we're doing it wrong. We're too many times, we're saying things and doing things that are so out of character of what God has created us to be. And this is, like I said, is a trick of the enemy. This is the way he wants it to be. And he doesn't care if you're sitting here. That's fine. But as long as you're not doing what you're supposed to do at home and out there, that's all, that's all that matters to him. But if he finds that you're in this word, Morning, noon, and night, when you, have a free, when you have free time and you're not in the phone on a game or in front of the TV or on the phone talking to someone about someone or doing whatever, 
other than staying before the Lord, then he's, he's going to get you. He's going to trip you up. And I tell folk, I don't give him any credit. I don't give him any place. I, I always read and, and I, I literally to a point see that verse of scripture where the Lord says, there's the Satan, there's the devil, and he has no place in me. So that means that every part of our spiritual being, every part of that soulish realm has to be filled with something pertaining to God. Don't give no place. If there's a space in the living room, put a scripture in there. If there's an area in the bathroom, in the kitchen, and I'm talking about the soulish realm, not even hey, if even in your home, go around with your oil and anoint. But allow the power that God has given to you, to us. Because saints, we're living in a time now where the enemy is running rampant. But I mean, I'm I'm literally when I watch the news to find, like I said, to get the weather now in the morning, I hear about this young man that kills his father. But he didn't just kill him. He beat him to death. Well, beat him with a hammer, I don't know how many times, in his head. And then while he was down on the floor, he goes get a knife and just begins to stab him. I don't know how many times. And I'm, I mean, I was on my way out the room, and I hear this, and I'm standing there almost like in shock where the children are disrespecting, dishonoring their parents. And he just gave himself up like, you know, no big deal. He didn't do what I asked him to do. So, you know, he got what he deserved. And and I'm heart-wrenching. But let me tell you, if your mind isn't saturated with the word of God, if your soul is not being transformed by the word of God, if you're not knowing who you are, walking in who you are, who God has called you to be, the enemy could do the same thing to you. Because it's a matter of taking that soul, that mind, that will, the emotions, and twisting it up so till you believe that what he's saying is truth and you will begin to act on it. This is how detrimental and how life-threatening this is. This message truly is, if you just grab hold and understand. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. If you continue to walk in the old ways, you will become dead. The end of that life is death. Don't Take your salvation for granted. Actions do speak louder than words. And as Paul said, you know, even though this flesh acts up, but if you feed it, it's going to act up even more, and it will take control. How many of us have tried to go on a diet and stayed on it, lost the weight we wanted? You lost all the weight you wanted. You feel good. I did it. I accomplished it. Willpower don't work anymore. So what is that telling you? Willpower used to work because I used to do it when I was in high school and in college. Willpower worked. Willpower don't work anymore because the enemy is getting stronger and stronger and stronger because we allow him to. So now the power that I have on the inside, I got to totally rely on it. Holy Spirit, now help me here. You know I'm not supposed to be eating this. You know I'm not supposed to be doing this. You know I'm in your hands. You're responsible for my life. I give him permission to have control over my life. And in doing so, he is accomplishing great things. He will accomplish great things. But we've got to know, Paul said, you know, oh, wretched man that I am. And then the eighth, the first chapter of the eighth verse says, therefore there is no... Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is no condemnation to us, towards us. We're not condemned. God has freed us from that. We're no longer under condemnation. We're no longer under the law. We're under grace. So let's start acting like we're under grace. 
Don't use it as liberty to do whatever you feel like doing or big enough to feel to do. But do it to the glory and honor of God that he be glorified, that he be seen in this world, in this earth. Galatians 5, 16, 17 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth or warreth after the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. There's a struggle going on. And I know y'all feel it sometimes. There's a struggle going on. But the Spirit, the mind has got to be strong enough. Do y'all remember when Pastor did that teaching on tug of war? Y'all remember that 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 diagram he gave us, the three figures, and you had the one standing in the middle and they were tugging. You had the flesh pulling one way and the soul pulling another way, trying to, the spirit trying to pull that soul from one side to the other. If you're strong in the word, if you got the word of God in you, the flesh may try to pull, but it ain't going to move you. The soul will stand strong. You will be able to overcome. You will be able to walk victorious. Every day, no. Some days you will fall. Now, to give you an example, today, how many had a hard time getting up this morning? When, the, when it's cloudy out, when the sun's shining bright, now if you're real tired, I don't care how sunny it is, you just, it's just a rough time getting up. It's like going up the rough side of the mountain. But... When it's cloudy and rainy, dark out, it's, it's things, different chemicals, hormones that your body releases, serotonin, adrenaline, and different things, and the sun makes you happy. So you're releasing that serotonin and the adrenaline and everything, and you're just popping up and going. But when it's cloudy and rainy out, you're, ugh, it's a lull. But when you begin to think on the goodness of Jesus, the sun, and I said, and I, somebody has said this, when the sun may not be shining out there, but on the inside, he is shining bright. So if you have to close your eyes and see the sun shining bright. When I worked at the hospital, I worked on the, in the, um, on the fifth floor of the OR, there were no windows. If you've ever been in the operating room or on that floor, there's no windows in any of the hospitals in the operating room. So when, in the winter months, when we would go in in the morning, it would be dark. When we would go home, it would be dark. On our breaks and our lunch, we had to leave that floor. Go, you didn't have to go outside, but you had to go down where there were windows. Find a window and just stand there. And they told us that. The doctors, different ones told us, just go out. Because they were some miserable people on that floor. I mean miserable but see, it didn't matter to me. I didn't have to go anywhere to get any sunshine because I had the sun shining on the inside. I learned that. I had the sun shining on the inside. And Shirley would bounce up into the lounge and say, good morning, folk. Shirley is here. And they said, who do you think you are, Jesus? Yep, that's who's shining on the inside of me. A lot of people think Shirley's crazy. But like Pastor said, I've lost my mind and I've taken on the mind of Christ. And when you get into that attitude, it's not about what people think about you. Because the time is going to come that they're going to need that that you have on the inside of you. Be prepared. But we are a new creation. God took something, nothing, and made us new. Romans 5 and 1, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone in here is born again. Amen? Amen. Praise God. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. We are a new creation, and it is a wondrous thing. We were formed in the mind of God and created by his power and for his glory. We were formed in the mind of God. He thought about you individually of how he wanted you to be. And then he formed you. He created you with his power. So now we should see one another differently. We don't judge one another. 
We don't criticize one another. We don't talk down about one another. We don't backbite. We don't talk about one another because y'all belong to God. You're God's property. You're God's children. We see one another in a different light. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Bishop, we've got a lot to do today. So, <clears throat> but God be the glory. Excellent job. Excellent job. Yo.